when I would say I was about five, six, and I loved my life. I was quite cocky. I was quite <laughs> out there. I thought I was fabulous in the bee's knees. And it was only when I started to interact with wider society that I was told I was wrong. I was, you know, not, not, not supposed to be loved. At what point did this happen? When did you notice as a child, I am different? Like these kids are, are saying things to me that, yeah. that are not positive and I, it, it makes you feel uncomfortable. I would say I went to infant school yeah. and my infant school, I was definitely the only disabled one in the school. But were they accepting? Do you know, they were. And this is quite telling of society as yeah. a whole. At primary school, I remember they, I used to have a power wheelchair and I was on the on the grass and they all picked daisies. All the school class picked daisies when I joined and they all put the daisies on my wheelchair. Oh and I loved man. it. And then I went to high school. Unfortunately, my, my father d passed away suddenly. We were, we were moving to New Zealand. Then he died and it was all like, oh my goodness, world turned upside down. So I had to go to a high school. The high school I, w I wanted to go to with all my peers turned around and said, no, we're not having someone in a wheelchair. And that was back in the day when they were allowed to discriminate. Oh. So I went to a completely different high school. I knew nobody. What was this, late 80s? Uh, yeah, yeah, in early 90s. Um, sorry, my age. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, but no, I, I then went to a different school, didn't know anyone, and I was and the girl on the wheelchair. This was a state school with yes. um, able-bodied... Non-disabled people, yeah. yeah. I mean, and then I was the disabled one. So primary school, I was Sam, I had these like awful Benetton multicolored glasses, remember Benetton, um, and you know, long pigtails, and that's how someone would describe me. As soon as I went to high school, I was the girl in the wheelchair, right. and I received horrendous bu bullying And it was at this point. point that everything changed for you, and then most, the bullying mo started. Most definitely. Do, do you think, interestingly, like looking at that, if, do you blame it on the fact that you change schools and then there's new people, or do you think that, I, I'm talking from experience, yeah. From primary school to secondary school, there's a huge difference. It was probably a combination mm -hmm. of everything. Yeah. I think if I were to be, uh, would have gone to the school that I knew everyone, I would have, you know, there would have been people there that maybe thought, don't really like Sam, but not necessarily because she's in a wheelchair. Yeah. I think I was. Because you were gobby. Because I was gobby. <laughs> you know, let's face it, you know, uh, no one likes that. Um, but no, um, I, but I definitely, th I definitely th feel as though the bullying started started to intensify and I, and that manifested in me kind of be, being sick I was always sick and having a condition with brittle bones so I've you know broken about 200 bones in my life yep. I'd be like oh mummy I think I've cracked, cracked I've cracked a rib today <laughs> you know yep. so I was often that definitely impacted my my kind of my studies yeah. you know of course completely yeah. completely